you can become so deceived that you can actually think you're serving the Lord, but you're really serving yourself. Uh, you, you, you can think one thing, but it's really the opposite. You can think uh, because you have so much praise and adoration for man that you're someplace in the kingdom of God. But there's nothing in the kingdom that's really responding to you. You've built your own kingdom apart from the Lord. We need to get very open with the Lord and say, you know what? If I've not really built a holy altar unto the Lord, if I'm not seeking the Lord, seeking his kingdom and his righteousness first, if that's not really a part of my life, now I may fake it. I may come to the body of Christ. I may come to the assembly and, and, and I might be able to prophesy. I might be able to speak in tongues. But you know, you can have all those gifts and be very immature in your, in your private life with the Lord. And so the Father is saying, this is a time for us to get very honest with ourselves and deal with this sin. But you will not be able to have that sin burned up in your life unless that altar is burned up in your life. Because sin lands on the altar. You understand what I'm saying? If you build an altar to sin, well, you can ask God to forgive you of that sin. But if that altar remains, guess what? Like a homing pigeon, that sin's going to come right back and land on the altar that you've built. So it's the altar that has to be destroyed. And how are you going to destroy it? With your willpower? With your might? With your strength? No, no, no. You have to exchange your might for the might and the power of God. It's not through might nor by power, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. And how is that going to happen? By your time with the Lord, by your intimate time with the Lord, by you seeking the Lord, by you fellowshipping with the Lord. Now, unfortunately, there are many people, Christians, that build an altar to a false god in a secret place. In other words, they have secret sins. They're moving in uh, secret ways, perhaps in their heart or perhaps in their home uh, that they would not want anybody to see them do. They're ashamed of some, certain behaviors that they're, they're moving in. And it's secret sin. That, beloved, is an altar too. And you're making an exchange. It brings you some type of pleasure. A pleasure, it may be a sick pleasure, but it is a pleasure. And you will receive for that exchange, not blessing, but curse, not life, not the abundant life that Jesus came to give you. And Jesus said, I've come to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly. You won't receive the abundant life, but you will receive death instead. That's what the, the devil trades in. So when you trade your sin, you're trading it unto Satan. You're not trading it unto God because there's no sin in the Lord. So you can see how other altars, like altars of television, altars of Facebook, uh, you know, altars of work. You know, people can get addicted to work. Altars of pornography, whatever. You find yourself before those altars and you're putting them at a higher place than you are the Lord. They're taking precedent in your life. They're, they're an idol. And that's why there's sin in your life. And so these things must be torn down. But there are very, very few people uh, that can successfully deliver themselves from those things, those addictions. But the Lord can deliver you. He can deliver you. And He will deliver you as you build an altar unto Him. But you're going to find that the more time you spend with the Lord, the more time you're in the presence of God, the more time you're glorifying the Lord, you're building that altar. You're building the altar of God. You're making covenant with the Lord. You're coming into true partnership with the Lord. And what you can't do, God will do for you. You can't deliver yourself, but the Lord can deliver you because He is your deliverer, saint. He is your deliverer. But you will not be able to walk in that deliverance until you have put down those vain things, sacrificed those vain things, 
find yourself in the presence of the Lord more and more and more so that the fire of God can come fall from heaven and consume those altars of idolatry in your life. Isn't that a wonderful promise that as we spend time with Jesus, we are going to change and we are going to become more and more like the Lord.